Hello, it's Nikki. How are you doing? Um, today I want to talk about Duolingo, uh, which is a favourite of mine. And as of yesterday, I have been doing it for 365 days. Now, I have been doing it imperfectly and I am not speaking Spanish perfectly by any means. But I wanted to share what that process has been like of doing something for a year, some takeaways that I have taken away, I guess, and to really bring some perspective out on the other side. Because we might all hear about this, these moments of, okay, we've set the goal and we're working on the vision. Okay, we'll do X, Y, and Z. But I always want to know what happened on the other side. What happened when you did the thing for a year? So here are my uh, five things that I can share with you. Number one, um, studying in adult life when it's not a priority or urgent, and this can be applicable to any of your goals, things that take up your time or your money. So whether you're trying to grow something or build a business or add more exercise or do more things you love, whatever it might be. When it's not urgent or technically important, it can be easily pushed to the side. And I have, with Spanish, for example, I've tried everything and I've been to Spain. I've um, spent a lot of time in Spain. I've done online courses. I've bought books. I've used Google Translate. I've had a Spanish dictionary that I've been kind of looking out for the words. And the only thing that has ever really moved me on in terms of my progression is doing Duolingo, is doing the online course. Because for me, I've realized in order to make progress, I need to be consistent. There is absolutely no point me doing something once a month because I forget about it come the next month or even once a week for me. I really need it to be a daily thing. Now, I don't have four spare hours in my day. So even if I can just do something for like two minutes and that's the kind of minimum, that will see me through. Number two, you have to make a habit, a goal, Duolingo, whatever it is, you have to make it easy to do. So the fact that Duolingo is the little duo dude um, pops up and, and is like, hi, Nikki, on my notifications, like, we're doing Spanish. Hi, I'm here. You haven't done your Spanish today. What's going on? We have to create those things in our lives. And there's so much technology out there that can help and support us to do that. But it's so easy. I can, and I don't need to tell you how great the internet is or how you how brilliant your phone is. But the fact I can pick it up, I can do it in two minutes. My son also does it as well. It's it's so easy. It's And it's ridiculous not to do that in a way. So if I can get to a stage where I can do that little and often consistency and the expectations are doable and fairly low, I'm more likely to actually stick at something. Number three, I have done this imperfectly and I've missed some days, not many, probably about 15. But as you play the game, you get these um, things called free streaks I think they're called they're these little gems and basically if you miss the day for whatever reason you have some of those in in your bank and they will let you continue on your streak but the good thing about it and the thing that we need to recognize because there are some people that will say I have done this one habit for the last thousand and six days but even things when I look at my own life of habits that I have so I would say that I am always somebody, 99% of the day, um, the time rather, I'm somebody who has breakfast. I, I need breakfast. I love my breakfast. I sound like my granny Olive, but I genuinely look forward to my breakfast every day. I spend time making it. I make the same for my son. My daughter's not really a breakfast person. She's much more of a, you know, let's have stuff later on. But I love it. But on those days where I've been ill or when I was pregnant, I just, I, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted to eat or anything like that. Now, was I going to lose that habit, that love of having the breakfast? No, I allowed myself to do it perfectly. And also 
to know that I can then just get back on the ride. And I think this is really important as well, is that sometimes we put this pressure on ourselves to do things perfectly. And then when it doesn't go right, and, or there's bumps in the road or whatever it might be, what we then end up doing is saying, well, I don't know, oh, I'll, I've given up, or we feel really negative. And then it might be like another six months before you get back on that train. And what I've noticed with these gems is when I miss a day, I go, right, I'm not missing today. Right, that was yesterday. Now it's time to move on. And I get back on the train. And that has been really key. Number four. Um, oof. This is so apt for so many goals that we're all working on. I don't know what's going on with this lighting, by the way. Let me just move you. Is that better or even worse? Who knows? Um, when we are working on something, when we're making progress, there will be times where everything makes so much sense. I love it when in the Spanish, for example, I'll meet a new verb. I'm like, I know exactly what to do with you. I know what kind of ending you're going to have. I know how that's going to work in the sentence. And I love that moment where I make a really sort of calculated guess and it pays off. And then there are some modules, some parts of it where I'm meeting all these new words, I'm meeting all these different ways of future, past tense, all of these things. And I get to a point where I'm like, I know absolutely nothing. I feel that I'm starting from scratch. There are so many ways and situations that that shows up in our own lives. And so what I've learned to do is just accept that this will be part of the process and learn to accept that the more that I do, so in terms of the Spanish, the more words that I meet, the more likely this is gonna happen because I'm not gonna get comfortable because I'm moving through the unit. So I'm automatically meeting new things. So bear it in mind, know it's part of the process, it's completely normal, it's not a reflection on you and you're doing brilliantly. Finally, you really have to implement and bring to life what it is that you're working on. So last summer, my brother and his lovely wife got married in Spain. And part of me was, well, seven months in, I was like, oh, we're going to Spain. Yeah, I speak a little bit of Spanish. Yep, 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 yep. That's what I was thinking in my head. I got there. I mean, even when I was on the plane where they do the safety checks or they welcome you on board, they'll often say it in English and then they'll say it in Spanish as well. Oscar, my seven-year-old, was like, what are they saying? And I couldn't really say. Like, I knew the word for door, an aeroplane, a Malaga. Uh, but they spoke so fast. And I think I had to realise that the only way I'm truly going to learn is if I put myself in the real life situation. And that is so important for really taking things to the next level. Now, I am proud of myself that we left my brother's wedding at five in the morning and I managed to get me and a couple of others home. I felt really pleased that I managed to direct a taxi to and remember where I lived to the villa and give directions that was you know that was a great thing because I'd been up for many many hours at that point that was great but I think it's important as well to remember that we have to embody something we have to implement it we have to be out in the world and the temptation for me could be just to be really good at Duolingo in the comfort of my own home, putting it on the slow mode so I can really hear each and every word. And that was a real reminder to me of saying, I've got to use the speaking function. I've got to speak in Spanish. I've got to go to Spain more often, etc. That's when I'm really, really going to learn. If you want to try it, if you want to have a dabble with um, languages once again, I have a code for you. Um, this is not sponsored by Duolingo, although give us a call Duolingo if you want to, but this is a code. I think you get a free week and so do I. So um, yeah, have a look. Let me know how you get on and um, adios. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Bye.